And, and this globalist, elitist type of attitude, this paternalistic type of attitude, uh, needs to end. And, and, and I think, again, it's been with us a long time. You know, religions tend to be corrupted usually a generation or two after as people discover the mysteries within the religion, within the philosophy, that actually, you know, science doesn't operate in a vacuum either. You know, God created order, and, and out of that comes, uh, in one sense, uh, some science. And, you know, it helps us understand the creation, but it isn't the creation in and of itself. And that, I think, is, again, getting back to this basic thing about changing the world requires changing ourselves. And getting rid of fear and worry is the first step in making that change. And then opening up our eyes uh, to the things that we can do and acting on them and seeking. I believe it's important to seek the face of God. Whatever that means to you, um, I think that is incredibly important. And in the seeking, it's the finding. Uh, and I'm not going to tell people because that opens you up. I mean, now the box is gone. When you start yes. to seek it, then you realize that you can see much further than you thought. Yeah, that's exactly it. And and then you also get this recognition you're not alone. And then you start to recognize a little bit about what is possible. As you start to run into what you call coincidences, and you realize they're not coincidence at all, you start to do things that all of a sudden the resources appear when you didn't think there were any. Those are you know that's. That's miraculous living, and it starts with a changed attitude and a changed outlook. And it is a struggle every single day to change who we are, but it is critically important to recognize that's what life is on this planet. <laughs> From the time we're born to the time we die, it's an evolution. It's a recognition of our strength. Exactly. The globalists try to create an artificial system where on the surface there's no struggle, right. but in that is actually the death you know, of... Uh, your individualistic drive, it is through the struggle that we are empowered. Absolutely. And, in fact, that's our best learning environment. And, you know, in the one sense, you know, we're, we're going through a rough time in the economy. We're going through a lot of rough times around the country. And we see the awakening. And the awakening happens because that's when we recognize our own strengths because it's either die or live. We have to make choices. And then we start to recognize the neighbors that we have around us who we never even saw before, who, who have their hand out and always did. Uh, that's where the change starts. Well, beautifully said. Let's take some calls and do one more short segment because Doc's got to go at 30 after, and I really want to get to these calls, but what a profound interview. And I talked to the Doc. Uh, it was his idea, but it's funny. At the same time, I've been thinking about folks to fill in more often when I'm working on films or going out of town, and he just volunteered. Hey, I could fill in sometime. So we're getting a great list of folks, the health ranger, Dr. Nick Begich, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, Lou Rockwell. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to uh, John in Colorado. John, you're our first caller for Dr. Nick Baggage. Yes, hi. How you doing? Good. You got a question for him? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm an electronics technician, and uh, I just love what you guys are talking about today. I've always been interested in physics and quantum physics and stuff like that. But anyway... Um, the question I had was, does HARP use a particular frequency? Yeah, it, it does, and it, it, it's, a, it's in the high frequency range, but it covers, and because you have the technical background, you can manipulate the primary signal and create a secondary effect, which actually gives you the range of 16 decades of frequency, which covers everything from ultra-low to visible light. Is that the and, modulation? Yes, this is by modulating it or pulsing the signal to create varying effects, and the coupling with the ionosphere to utilize it for creating effects. But it's essentially a high-frequency transmitter. If you, you can go to the official HARP website and get the specific frequency. I don't have it right in front of me. But, again, it's, it's the narrow band of high frequency that's used then to create this larger effect. Going back to that question, I never had time to jam in, and then we'll get a, another quick one and go to break, come back with uh, other callers. But why are so many of these towers near the poles? I mean, is it easier to manipulate there? Well, you want to be close to where the magnetic field lines intersect the Earth, which is at the poles, and you also need a high uh, available source of energy. And, of course, uh, in Alaska, we have the uh, oil and gas fields of the North Slope. Twenty-five percent of all the undiscovered oil in the world is in the uh, Arctic, and so that's important. But the magnetic field line locations is the critical element. The closer they are to the ground, the easier it is to inject energy into them, uh, much more efficient. Is there any evidence they're actually sucking some type of energy source out of the polar vortex?
Well, that's, you know, that's a question that has not been adequately answered, and there's really a question of whether they can tap energy out of the ionosphere, which is a... Yeah, because you, I mean, you have those magnetic fields, correct, coming in at that point into the atmosphere and into the pole. We'll be right back with more calls. Great question, John. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying a solar power generator. Number one, new climate legislation could easily double or triple your electric bill. Number two, our new energy czar wants to control how much power your electric company allows you to have. It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Number three, in some areas of the country, the power grid is dangerously overloaded. And now new socialist legislation is only compounding the problem. Number four, dangerous weather is always a threat to local grids. Every year, thousands of families lose their power from weather-related outages. Number five, a solar power generator provides powerful backup insurance and peace of mind. Folks, I really believe in the solar power generators offered by Solutions from Science, one of my oldest sponsors. You can get more information at www.mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun, so go to mysolarbackup.com or call 1-877-327-0365. Good day, Jim Newcomer from Midas Resources. January 5th, 2011. Gold opened this morning at $1,380. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for $1,415.76. $707.88 for a half ounce or $353.94 for a quarter ounce. That's $1,415.76. $707.88 or $353.94. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, warning of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. CBO is drawing a parallel between U.S. economy and the Greek economic meltdown. Debt to GDP climbing to unfamiliar territory and deficits rising to unsupportable levels. Hi, Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risks of deficit spending, aging population, and rising interest rates spells economic disaster. Call today at 800-686-2237. I'll send it free. Again, call 800-686-2237. Ask for the CBO document. Call 800-686-2237. Hundreds of nations have fallen to tyranny in the last century alone. This is our last chance to not relive history. As we're finishing off this agenda, uh, they'll be pulling the rug from underneath Americans at home. I have tremendous influence on our president and Congress, and they really are calling the shots. I think it's incumbent upon all of us as American citizens to pay attention. Fall of the Republic identifies the enemies of our nation, the criminal offshore cartel, hell-bent on destroying sovereignty and on its ashes constructing world government. Tim Geithner, Bernanke, they're arsonists. They're asking for more matches. And the Congress is saying, who do we make the check out to? Today, seems like nobody does care. And right now in Washington, D.C., we have seen a fall of the Republic. Get your copy of Fall of the Republic on DVD at Infowars.com or watch it online right now in super high quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Hello, at OfTheField.com, we strive to empower you with wild food preparedness. We get lots of amazing positive feedback, most of which we feature on OfTheField.com. Here's a small sample of all that people like you have to say about the wild food experience. It's inspiring for many who are affected by the recent downturn of the economy. I already knew a bit about foraging and edibles, but you take it to a whole new level. A thousand thanks to you for all that great knowledge. It was empowering. When I was in the Navy, I went through a couple of quick land survival classes. Thank you for being an inspiration and for all the work that you do. I really appreciate the depth and detail of the information. Thank you so much. Much love and respect to you from all of us here in the boonies. Thanks again. Knowledge is power, and that power brings peace. Folks, thanks for letting us help you get back to basics. Read all of the testimonials at ofthefield.com. You can order online for you and your loved ones, or call 1-888-51-EAT-FREE to share in the secret. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones, only on the GCN Radio Network. There's been big developments on that top Bush aide. Looks like mind control. Incredible developments on that front. Uh, the guy found dead in the landfill. That's coming up the next segment. Only got five minutes left with Dr. Begich. I've hogged him for myself, but we're going to your calls with quick questions. Uh, who's up next here, John? Mark in Minnesota. Quick question or comment for Dr. Begich. Uh, yes, doctor. I was wondering your take on, uh, I don't know, I didn't catch the whole show here, so I don't know if you've covered this, but... Uh, I was wondering about the the Gulf oil spill and if uh, 
some of the toxins could be coming out of the Gulf and coming on shore and uh, developing some kind of a clouds of gas or toxins and and killing the birds and animals down there. That's a good that's question, a, Doc. That's a great question. I don't, I don't have any specific information on that, and I've not I've not seen anything on that. But you know, we did see a huge release of toxic material there, similar to what we had at the Valdez Exxon spill. But we didn't see those kinds of effects associated with our spill here. Um, so it's hard to say. I, I think time, the, the judge is out on that, but it's certainly a, a good issue to raise because it, it did bring in a lot of toxins that weren't in the environment before. Well, I, we we know when they say all the seafood's safe, the tests have showed no, it's not. They've been no lying way. about that. Mark, great question. Bill in Florida, you're on the air with Dr. Nick Baggage. Hi, Alex. Um, I got a uh, question. How do I protect myself against a uh, cell phone tower that is 200 yards away. Uh, there's not a lot um, you can actually do. I mean, short of creating a, a Faraday cage and shunting the energy away from you, and that's not a practical solution. Uh, I can tell you up to 1,500 meters cell towers have a biological effect. That was documented years ago. I, I lectured with one of the scientists in Switzerland some years ago on this same subject, and that's the, 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 the range is 1,500 meters, which is... You know, quite a bit further out than you are. Um, the greater effect is with young children or developing children. Uh, they tend to be more affected by this. If you remember the old EPA studies of power lines, when they involved children, they showed all kinds of negative effects. So they redid the studies with just adults and showed no effects. Um, that's important. Uh, the only real solution is reconsideration of your location uh, if, if you feel it's affecting your health and uh, in a deleterious way. And we see this across the spectrum with fluoride, many right. times worse for children. It's right. seen radiation, many times worse. I guess it's something to do with the fast, you know, growing, fast dividing cells. Right. We know that radiation in adults targets uh, the gums, the intestines, fast growing cells. With a child, the whole thing's fast growing. That's exactly it. And, and then for other technologies like cell phones where you're placing them against your head, the skull's thickness is half at, at, at age five of, a, of, of an adult, and so or less than half. So you have a lot more energy transiting into the brain. And so there's lots of physical characteristics with children that affect them much differently uh, than adults, particularly when you're considering these new sources of, of concern. Good question, Bill. Donna in Louisiana, you're on the air worldwide. Yes, hello, Alex? Yes. Okay, um, nice to talk to you. Um, Thank you for all you do, and thank you, Dr. Beggage, as well. Um, I was wondering about empathy genes, uh, pertinent to what you were talking about earlier. Um, they did some studies several years ago, I don't know, five, ten years ago, I remember, wondering why at the time they were interested in such a thing. But uh, this may play into some of your discussion about mind control and fear and um, the empathy that we have that they're trying to or something. Well, we know the Pentagon has been working on turning off empathy to have kind right. of biological android. I mean, who needs a Terminator machine when you've got a human that's had their thinking process sh uh, turned off? Dr. Baggage? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, there's a lot of work being done now because of post-traumatic stress sy syndrome of wiping out memory. Now, I would be very concerned about this because of several reasons. One is you wipe the memory clean on the surface, you may not uh, wipe it out. In other words, you continue to play with it in your subconscious, which could lead to huge, uh, huge and new forms of psychosis. The other thing is, is what if all those troops were involved in some illegal, immoral, unethical, evil activity that normal human beings wouldn't participate in, which is why they're experiencing post-traumatic stress syndrome, and that what you're trying to do is wipe out their memory so you can deny that whatever they saw or participated in never happened. That's that's my concern. Well, that's like studies show that people don't get very depressed when they see killing as something that was in defense or righteous. But right. your body, your brain actually attacks you uh, if it thinks you've done bad. Even if you've rationalized consciously, your yep. subconscious wants to kill you. Yeah, and it's, it's, you know, I think we're playing in an area that is very, very dangerous. You know, trying to uh, wipe out a memory rather than deal with what it is that has changed a person. You know, we do the same thing with in this country every day with, with chemicals issued by doctors instead of people sitting down with counselors getting to the root of their problems. Um, now we want to just wipe out the memory so we can excuse bad behavior. I don't think it's a good idea. Doc, I won't keep you any longer after the break. Just We'll just do two minutes and plug Earth Pulse.
uh, and uh, your work and how folks can support it. And we'll let you go. Then I'll get into all the big news, folks, and more of your calls. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Infowars.com and their side, of course, we'll give you on the other side of this break. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the...